talk about weather. Well, I'm well, done I'm wasting done time about the weather. If you'll please stand. We are going to get started by reading from God's Word. I'm reading a portion of Jonah's prayer. A portion of Jonah's prayer. Listen to this. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer went up to you into your holy temple. Those who regard worthless idols forsake their own mercy. Meaning, Meaning they're forsaking forsaking God. God. But I will sacrifice sacrifice to you with with the voice of thanksgiving. thanksgiving. I will pay pay what what I have vowed. Salvation salvation is of the Lord. Lord. Let us pray. Father, thank you. Thank you for bringing us all to that place. Bringing us to the, for those who have come to that place. To the end of ourselves and seeing our need for you to where we cry out to you. Father, I pray that you will be glorified in this service today. I pray that you'd be glorified in our lives individually and as a local body of Christ here this morning. We thank you for life. We thank you for new life in Christ. We thank you for this building in which we can worship. We thank you that the church is more than a building. The church is the body of Christ. And so thank you for just this opportunity and this place to come, that the body can come and worship you together. Father, thank you for your faithfulness towards us. Help us to be faithful to you. Father, help us to be people of thanksgiving as we read from Jonah's prayer. But I will sacrifice to you with the voice of thanksgiving. I pray that our praise is acceptable to you today, Lord. May your Holy Spirit direct us in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remain standing.
Amen. 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 That first song, first song to be still and behold him, be still and behold him, be still and behold him. Those who have Those understand, understand that. that. Understand that and song, that, that song, line of the song. song, song. To behold him, to be still. Just to be still and to behold him, to sit quietly in his presence and to just contemplate and to meditate upon who he is. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God's ultimate sign from God. Jesus is all those things that we sang about, the, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, the roaring lion who defeated both sin and the grave. That's who Jesus is. And then to, to sing what we just finished up with, to me, is amazing. He's our living hope. And, I, and so I was thinking of, of, of Peter. Did he always see Jesus as a living hope? Do you see Jesus as the living hope today? I think of Luke 5, and I don't know the verse right now, but, but I just think of after that miracle of catch of fish, that, that miraculous sign that Jesus did just brought revelation and illumination to Peter's heart. To the point where he falls before Jesus and says, get away from me, I'm a, a sinful man. And then Jesus said, don't worry, Peter, from now on you'll, you'll, you'll catch men. To, to where then in his epistle we read about him talking about, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who has begotten us again to a living hope. Isn't that neat, the transition that, that, that had taken place to where we're away from God, we're separated from God, and, and yet in, he, in His goodness He brings us understanding of who we are without Him and, and, and who He is, and then the blessing of coming to know Him, and then to be able to go through life with His light and His life. And the, and the purpose and the hope and the, hope, and the, and the focus, focus and the direction, and the direction that, we that we receive through him. Through him. Turn, in Turn in your Bibles, Bibles to Luke, Luke chapter 11. 11. Luke chapter 11. 11. 11. 11. We, are we are continuing our study. study. We've, been We've been looking at, looking at the, the life and times, times of Jesus of according Jesus to Luke's gospel. gospel. I was I trying was to count. To count. <laughs> that didn't go that well for me. No, I was trying to count. My Sundays were left between now and and the end of this and month and trying to trying work to it out. I, I really, really would like to finish chapter 11 before the first Sunday of December. I don't know. Well, we'll see. I'm not going to do it just for the sake of doing it. I've got to be obedient to um, the Lord's leading. And so I pray, and you can be praying about that too, and I really don't know what our rush is through this. Anyhow, and perhaps you're not even rushed to get through this. It's just it's on my mind that we got to get through this, but... Today, Today, we are going, we are to, going pick to pick up where we left off last, last week, week, and we're reading verses 29, 29 through 36. 36. Luke chapter 11, 11 verse 29, 29 through 36. 36. And lest I forget, lest I forget the contact or the, the timing, the setting of this, Jesus is now down to the final months of his earthly ministry, the final months. We're less than a year now as far as the setting yet, okay? So just, so just understand, understand that, that as we, we read down read through down these through verses, verses of where, where things, things are, at. are at. And while the crowds were thickly gathered, he began to say, this is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, and no sign will be given to it except the sign of Jonah the prophet. For as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so also the Son of Man will be to this generation. The queen of the south will rise up in the judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. For she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed a greater than Solomon is here. The men of Nineveh will rise up in the judgment with this generation and condemn it, for they repented. At the preaching of Jonah, and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. 
No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand. That those who come in may see the, what, church? The light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed. That means be careful. Watch out. That the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light. As when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. And Jesus is that bright shining lamp. He indeed is the light and the life of the world. Let us pray. Father, thank you for time together this morning. Once again, I thank you for that. And Holy Spirit, I pray that you would take your word, the living word, and bring understanding to us. Father, I pray that you would remove the dullness of hearing. That you would open eyes to see. That hearts would be receptive, pliable. Uh, that, that wills, wills will be broken to broken where, to where uh, we, we desire, desire your will your above will all things. things. Father, Father, may your may word your challenge, challenge our, our intellect, intellect, our rationale. Our rationale. Minister, Minister to, our to our entire, entire inner, inner person. person. Help, us Help us to see ourselves, see ourselves here, here as far as, as how the crowd, the crowd handled, handled Jesus, Jesus, the conclusions the that they that drew. They drew. Help us to consider the contrasts that are before us and also the challenge that Jesus gives here. Help us to see your son as he truly is and help us, if we haven't already, to humble ourselves before him. That we may know him, his life, his light, and have the light for life. Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Some of you some may be you may too young for this. Some of you may be too old. old. I suppose some, some are maybe some are even, even too refined, refined and sophisticated. But to remember back, to remember back years, years ago, ago, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's Jeff, the refined and sophisticated. To, to, to remember that saying and that it even became a song, here's your sign. Here's your sign. We all want to, want to see signs. Sign. We, 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 we want things to be shown to us. We want things to be proven to us, right? right? right. The Jews in Jesus' Jesus day, day, the generation, generation of, his of his day, day. He, considered he considered them an, them evil, an evil generation. generation. A, a, a wicked, an adulterous, spiritually speaking, an adulterous generation. And as we've seen through verses from Genesis 6 and 8, Isaiah 17, different Psalms, really every generation is evil in the sense that all have sinned and all have fallen short of the glory of God, right? Right? Where we read in Romans 3, where, and this is a quote from the Psalms, that there is none good, no, not one, there's none who seek after God. And some of you might be thinking, well, this is the third week you, you down me with this, I'm not a good person, I'm evil, I'm sinful. We, we need to understand that. That that is man's condition. But when Jesus, when Jesus talked, talked about, about this generation, generation he, meant he meant those who he was ministering, he was ministering to at that, at time. that time. And he says, you're, he says, you're, you're, you're evil. evil. Why? Why? Because, because they, had, they, had, they, had they had more revelation, revelation given, to, given them to them than any, than any other, other generation, generation prior. prior. And they still and rejected, rejected him. him. They still they rejected, still rejected him. him. Well, let's, well, let's, well, let's, let's pick, pick up, up with, uh, with uh, where we left where we off, left last, off week. last week. 
And last and week, last as week, we transitioned into uh, communion, we looked at, at verse 28. Let, let's look at verse 27 first. And so we just came through that difficult passage of that illustration that Jesus gave about the unclean spirit leaving his house, cleaning up his house, or the, after he left, the, the person cleaned up their house, swept it, it is all empty, it's all good, vacancy, sign lit. And we find that seven more demons return with the original one. And that may be a little bit of an obscure uh, illustration or story that Jesus told, but his whole point was this. That, that the Jews, the spiritual leaders of that time, and the people as a whole, for the most part, they didn't truly repent at John's preaching. It was a superficial repentance. They looked squeaky clean on the outside. They looked religious externally speaking, but it wasn't real deal on the inside. It was super a superficial repentance, is a false repentance, if you will. And so they, they looked like they were good, God-fearing, moral people. And Jesus says, you're really not. You're really not. And that puts you in a worse condition than those who have those never who even never heard. heard. And so today is really a continuation of what he had been telling them all along. They were looking for a sign. Look at verse 16. Others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. Luke eleven sixteen. They accused him of casting out demons by the power of Satan. And yet Jesus says, no, no, no. If I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you, verse 20. So sign after sign, wonder after wonder, preaching, preaching, teaching, healing. And the Jews just kept hardening their hearts, hardening their hearts. And that was the point of the story of the unclean spirit leaving the man cleaning up his own house, self-righteousness, and actually becoming in a worse condition. Well, a woman cries out from the crowd, blessed is the womb, look at verse 27, that bore you and, and the breast which nursed you. There again, just thinking the blessedness is, is the one who had you. That's the true blessedness, the one who can say, yeah, that's my boy. And Jesus said, no, no. Better than, Better that. than that, I'll tell you, tell who, you who truly is blessed. Is blessed. And, and, this and, and this would have went, went in one, in one ear, ear and out and the out other the for other most, of most of them. And I pray and it I doesn't pray today. It doesn't today. Because, because Jesus, Jesus says, says, no, no blessed, blessed are those, are those who, who hear the word of God, God and keep it. So, so uh, if we can have our first slide, Caden. And then I'm also going to back up just a tad. Because I love backing up. No. So there it is, there for, it is you. for you. Somebody, Somebody relying, relying on, on external, external things, things, relying, relying on, on who they know, they know. Relying, relying on, on status. status. And Jesus says, no, more, more than, than that, than blessed, blessed happiness, happiness. Fortunate, fortunate, well off. Well off. Beneficial is the one who hears the word of God and keeps it. See, there's going to be things we need to consider today. There, there's things to contrast to. If you will, somewhere jot these down. If you will, you don't have to, but just some some points. And since the bulletin's pretty uh, just wide open there, you could just jot down this matter of hearing and keeping, this matter of seeking signs or seeking the Savior. This matter of matter light, light and darkness, light, darkness this matter, matter of rejecting, rejecting or repenting. Because that's what, because that's I, what see I see in our passage, passage today. And so, so well, we begin we with this matter of, of, of the one crying out and, out and Jesus giving, giving the directions. directions. Blessed, are Blessed, are Blessed are those who hear the word of God, God and keep it. Keep it. Week, after week, week after week after week, many of you have heard, 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 heard. And I pray it's not just in this setting. 
but that you're feeding your soul every day. You're hearing from the Word of God every day. But, but it, we have to take it further than just hearing. It needs to move to application. It needs to move to acting on the Word, and we act on the Word by being obedient to the Word. And this isn't new. We, we, when we were back in Luke chapter 8, probably a decade ago or so, whenever it was, but in verse 18 of chapter 8, it, it starts with, therefore. Therefore, take heed how you hear. This isn't the first time. This is something Jesus said to them again and again. And so we need to see the importance and, and, and hear the exhortation and the warning that is here of the importance of how we hear. What do you do with what you hear and learn about as far as the things of God? Therefore, take heed. How you hear. For whoever has, to him more will be given. And whoever does not have, even what he seems to have, may uh, or will be taken away. If you would have asked those spiritual leaders of, Jew, of the Jews then, and most of the Jews then, they would have said, we hear. We know what we have. And guess what? They were full. Again, they had never truly repented. They never truly heard with effectual hearing. They truly didn't respond. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. But within, they're still relying on self. How many understand what I'm saying? Their hearing wasn't enough to turn them to move away from self-reliance and self-righteousness and come to Christ. No, they still, no, they still hung, hung on, on, on to their own righteousness. And so Jesus, and so Jesus is saying, whoever does whoever not does have not even what he seems to have will be taken away. Taken away. So, you, so you, people, can people can go through, through their life, life and think, I have what it takes. I have what it takes. I have what it takes. And at the end, lose what they thought they had. Hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. Have you heard the word of God? What have you done with what you've heard? What are you doing with what you hear? Let me hear me. A little punishment. A little. Well, that's a little bit of review, which we've already seen. So we move on and we look at this, the uh, verses 29 and 30. Go ahead, Kate. And so let's, again, paint the picture. I was trying to imagine this in my mind. Again, back down, we're down to the last several months of Jesus' earthly ministry. Hey, popularity is growing. Interest is growing. It may be curiosity for most people. But the word's getting out, and as the word's getting out, the crowds are thickening. It's getting, he's, be, he's get seeing more and more followers. In fact, if you look at chapter 12, look at verse 1. One, in the meantime, when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trampled one another, he began to say to the disciples, first of all, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. We're going to see a lot of that hypocrisy in, 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 as we finish up chapter 11, but not today. And so the crowd is growing. It's thickening. Why? Well, because of, of hearing who this Jesus is or who he may be, this prophet from Nazareth. This could be the prophet that Moses spoke about. They're seeing signs and wonders. I was reminded of, of John or of Luke chapter 7. Go back there just for a quick moment. You guys are starting, guys are starting to get starting this get picture, this aren't you? We're going, going from 11, 11 to 8, 8 to 7. 7. Here he goes. Here he goes. John is in prison. And so John asks his disciples, hey, go to Jesus and ask him if he's the one. Ask him if he is the one. What does Jesus say? Jesus answered and said to him, verse 22, by the way, go and tell John 
the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Yeah, I'm the one. And in verse 23, and blessed is he who is not offended because of me. And most of them were offended because of John's message and of Jesus' message. So it didn't seem to matter how many signs and wonders that he did. It didn't seem to matter uh, that, the, the blind, that the blind the, the blind see, the lame walk, the leopards are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. It, it didn't seem to matter to the most of them. Yeah, but we want to see a sign. What about all the other signs you've seen? Do you see when there's an obstinate heart, when when, when there is an unfaithfulness, when there is a rejecting, obstinate attitude within the heart, there's never going to be enough of a sign. And the more one is, 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 is unfaithful and the more one... Insists on on more, 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 than the harder harder their heart heart becomes. becomes. And so we look at these verses, and while the the crowds crowds were thickly thickly gathered together, together, he began began to say, say, this is an evil generation. generation. It seeks a sign, sign. and no sign sign will be given to it except except the sign of Jonah Jonah the prophet. prophet. For as Jonah Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so also the Son of Man will be to this generation. And hence the 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 title, title. Jesus, Jesus. God's God's sign. sign. He is. He's he's the the ultimate ultimate sign. sign. When you think about it. it. You know, and and it starts clear clear back back in Genesis Genesis as far far as as God God telling us of this this, this this sign, of this wonder. Where it says, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your seed and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. God said right from the beginning, my son is coming. He will be the ultimate sign. When King Ahaz refused to ask God for a sign because of his obstinate heart, because of his wickedness. God says through the prophet, therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son. You shall call his name Emmanuel. We'll talk more about that next month, more than likely. The angels to the shepherds in Luke 2. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. It might might have been an odd sign that, okay, here's a baby born in a manger. Yeah, but think of everything that was said prior to that. That here comes comes the light of the world. world. Here comes the peace of the world. world. And this virgin virgin will will give give birth. birth. Here's your sign. When Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit descended in bodily form like a dove. God spoke from the sky, you are my beloved son. And you I am well pleased. Israel, the world, here's your sign. Here's your sign. What will you do with that sign? John's gospel in the beginning the wor- was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Verse 14 is, is God's ultimate sign. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of, of the Father, full of grace and truth. Metaphors, Metaphors, word word pictures. pictures. John the Baptist Baptist sees Jesus and says, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. world. You want to see a sign, Israel? Israel. Here he is, the revelation revelation of God in the flesh. Sometimes we shake our heads. Why couldn't they get that? Why didn't they get that? And yet, here we are, 2,000 years on the other side of the cross. Where First Corinthians can tells us or tells us that that five hundred people saw him at one time, the risen Lord. And when Paul was penning that down, half those people were still alive. You see, once we once we come to saving knowledge of Christ, once we forsake our rejection and our 
disbelief and unbelief and, and come to him, then, then it's like our eyes are open, they are, our ears are open, they are, our heart is softened, it's made new, and, and we can't, and then we think, why didn't I ever see this before? Well, they were wanting a sign, and Jesus says, you've had the signs. There's one more sign coming, which already in itself proves that they they rejected it. And the rejection would continue to the point of the crucifixion. An evil generation. Sproul says because they were the most blessed. They had the most revelation given to them through the person of Christ. They saw him. Oh, well, by the way, some readings for this week, suggested reading. In my note writing, it wasn't is, all right, here's your assignment. Because that just bristles some people up and forget it. Don't tell me what to do, buddy. Here's some suggested reading. Isn't that a little more palatable? Jonah. Seven and a half minutes yesterday, and I wasn't speed reading. Thoughtfully reading through it. Did it two or three times? You can read through Jonah in less than 10 minutes. I don't know why I'm so concerned about time, but I'm just telling. Take 10 minutes from Facebook and put your nose in the book of Jonah. How about that? Because Jonah isn't a fictional account. One of the minor prophets would have been translated into Greek, the Septuagint, before Christ walked the face of this earth. Jesus uses Jonah as an example. Other suggested reading, 1 Kings chapter 10. You'd really only have to go through the first 10 verses. I was going to withhold that, but, but that maybe makes it a little more doable than just the first 10 verses. And then 1 John chapter 1, and that's because our eyes have seen, our hands have handled. Well, we know this Jesus, and we know that if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Christ cleanses us from all sin. So 1 John, and by the way, 1 John 1, just read the first 10 verses. Some of you will get that later. All right, All right, there's only there's 10, only verses, 10 verses, in verses in 1 John 1. Now, now, now. you're wanting a you're sign. Wanting you're wanting a, wanting a sign. sign. In other words, yeah, but we, yeah, want, but we more want more of a sign, sign Jesus. Jesus. Why don't you do, something, you do something, something really spectacular? spectacular? Isn't, Isn't that, that what's, what's, what, what Satan did, did in that did time of temptation? temptation? If you're really the Son of Man, if you're really the Son of God, why don't you just put yourself up on the pinnacle and throw yourself down? Do a Superman trick. And Jesus says, you don't tempt God, Satan. Pack it up. And so, what sounds more demonic? Doesn't that sound like children of Satan, where in John 8, 44, he says, you are of your father, the devil? You see, it's unbelief. It's obstinate unbelief. You're, you're insisting that, no, it's not this way. That's why you want more of a sign. You want me to call fire from heaven. You want me to make the mountains shake like God did in Mount Sinai. You, 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 no, you've had enough signs. And what have you done with your signs that have given you? If you didn't believe these signs, you're not going to believe any signs. Like we read in Luke chapter 16, the rich man and Lazarus. And, 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 and he's saying, send, send somebody, somebody to my brothers. I don't want them to come to this place of torment. And Jesus said, no, if they didn't believe Moses, they're not going to believe somebody who has risen from the dead. Well, so they wanted a spectacular display. They wanted, they wanted more than what they have already seen. And Jesus says, here's, here's what's going to be given to you. 
For as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, and again, I can't spend much time on that. Read Jonah. You know, the, the real quick, the whole point of Jonah, by the way, is this. It's not so that we can do an object lesson in Sunday school of the whale that swallowed Jonah. The whole point of Jonah is God's compassion and mercy for wicked lost people. It is his pity on people. If you don't believe me, just look at, uh, and you knew I'd get here, uh, just in, in verse, in fact, Jonah was upset. Because Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, were the enemies of Israel. And so when Jonah's asked, go preach repentance to Israel, or to Nineveh, the capital of Assyria, Jonah says, no way. And he buys a ticket and he goes the opposite direction. That's where the whale comes in, or the sea monster. You know, it was probably a great white shark, and there are great white sharks in the Mediterranean known to be able to swallow a whole horse. So they could probably get a little fleeing prophet in one swallow. How many of you want to read Jonah? Good. Don't do it now. Do it later. Facebook off. Jonah. Jonah's compassion, or God is compassionate. Jonah said himself, basically, I was afraid you'd be like this towards my enemies. I'm reading from verse 2 of chapter 4, for I know that you are a gracious and merciful God, slow to anger, abounding, uh, abundant in loving kindness, one who relents from doing harm. He challenges Jonah in verse 11, and should I not pity Nineveh? And I'll just leave the rest to you to read. And so, what, bring that into context when we look at these two verses up here. There is, there is, you're an you're evil, an generation. evil you've generation, you've been given more, been more revelation, revelation, instruction, instruction signs, signs and wonder, and wonder than, any than any generation, generation so, far. so far. And you, you don't accept it. You want, you want more. more. Well, I'm telling you, I'm telling you no, no sign, sign will be given will to you except, except the sign of Jonah the prophet. the prophet. And when you read it, and, and Matthew's account tells us, he was, he was in the was in belly, the belly of, that of that sea creature, creature three, days. three days. And by the way, by the way in the Jews, I better just tell you this. A portion of a day can count as a day. So don't get tripped up. So basically, in about 28 hours, you could have three days. You could have part of one day, whole day, part of another, three days, three nights. Don't, don't split hairs with that. Figure of speech, maximum that the Jews used. We do the same thing. And so just so as Jonah, Jonah was, was in, in the belly, belly. if you will, if you that, will was that was his death. That was his burial. He cries out to God. And what does God do? Opens the mouth of that sea monster, spews him on the land. He would have been a sight. And I really think that that was part of Jonah's testimony to the Ninevites. He, he preached repentance. And guess what? I'm not telling you, you need to read the rest of it. And so, J so Jesus, Jesus said, for as Jonah, Jonah became a sign, a sign to the Ninevites, to the Ninevites. I'm, a I'm a sign to this generation. This is ultimately, this is ultimately speaking, speaking of, the of the fact that, that he is the resurrection and the life. life. As Jonah, Jonah was three was days in that, in that belly of that, 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 that sea creature, creature. The, son the Son of God, God will spend will three days in the body of this earth. That's Jonah was delivered, Christ would rise as a victor from the, from the grave. That's the point that Jesus is making. This is the ultimate sign. You'll get one more sign. This is going to be the sign. I'm going to rise from the dead. I'm going to do everything the prophets said I would do. And yet most of you will still reject me. Interesting. Look, so let's look at verse, and verse 30 is, is up there with that. So, for as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so also the Son of Man will be to this generation. 
I was thinking about this, and you know that within less than a year of this being said, here's what Peter preached on the day of Pentecost. Look at this. You can have that, please. Men of Israel. And again, the timing. Jesus is saying, you're not getting any more of a sign. No more than the sign of Jonah. And so in less than a year, here is Peter, ex-fishermen, as far as for fish, it wasn't steel it. In less than a year, he's fulfilling the prophecy that Jesus says, I'll make you fisher of men, Peter. And so what is he bragging about? What is the Holy Spirit directing him to preach and to teach? But that this sign that Jesus said, the fulfillment of that sign. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs. He's, he's not rubbing it in their face. We would do that. But the Holy Spirit of God is just reminding them. Jesus came to you with signs and wonders. He was attested by God, proven to God. You're saying, prove yourself, Jesus. We want to see a sign. What do you think all these things are? That I've just, just that I've given you time and time again. And so Peter, directed by the Holy Spirit, says, which God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves also know. And you know what? Deep down in their heart, in their hard and obstinate heart. Am I saying that word right? You know this. That's why some people say there's really no true atheists. It's not a matter of not believing. It's a matter of rejecting. No. no, you reject God. Enough, Enough general, general revelation, revelation has been given to you by the handiwork of God in your very conscience. You can say and think that that leaves me off the hook as long as I don't believe in God, then I'm fine. No, you're not. And it's not really a matter of disbelief, it's a matter of rejection. Is what it is. Next set of verses from Acts 2. Him being delivered. Look at this. By the determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. That's why Jesus was able to say. That's why the prophets said hundreds of years before. And Jesus was able to say, here's going to be the sign. Just as Jonah, three days. Son of man, three days. That's going to be your sign. And so this so was, was the, the, the determined, determined purpose and foreknowledge of God. of God. And yet they, and had, they responsibility. had responsibility. We, we, it says, you have, have taken by lawless hands, hands, have crucified, put to put death. death. Because, you, because stayed you stayed in your rejection. rejection. You, stayed you stayed in that in place, place of rejection. rejection. But, but, but you put to death you whom God, God raised up. God's ultimate sign, raised from the dead, having loosed the pains of death because it is not possible that he should be held by it. You know, I was thinking, uh, the metaphors that Jesus used of himself, the great I am statements. You know, I am the bread of life, and I'm going to say 812. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. Here he proves that he is the resurrection and the life. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He is the true vine. Metaphors that he used with his apostles. Illustrations that he gave the crowds, and yet they still rejected it. Well, we move on to the next passage, and there's no break in it. When you look at that, go ahead. I hope if you're at Luke 11, and get out of Jonah for now. Get over to Luke. When we look at verses 31 through 32, the queen of the south will rise up in the judgment. You can read about that First Kings 10. So here's the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, uh, modern-day Yemen, okay? 
And she travels that long distance to hear the wisdom of Solomon. She heard of this of this man of God, this 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 Hebrew, this this one who worships the true and living God. She heard of his wisdom. She had to see it for herself. Hear it for herself, quiz him, and she walks away, just babbles it. Uh, half hasn't even been told about you. And she acknowledges and honors. As far as conversion, I'll leave that to the scholars. I'll, 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 I'll just leave that alone. Jesus' whole point is this. This woman went searching. This woman went seeking. This queen, this 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 person of, of high regard, of of, of 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 high status, she went searching. When she heard about the wisdom of Solomon, she wanted to know more. When people hear about the things of God, either want to know more or just I don't, I'm not listening. I don't, I don't need any of that. See, every time Jesus says something like this, it's causing them to either respond in repentance and receive, if you will, or it's causing them to say, no, I don't believe that. Jesus is saying a queen from across the globe, if you will, maybe not that far. Desired to learn more about this God and about this King. You don't want to hear it. And so Jesus says, That this generation, that the Queen of the South will rise up in judgment with the men of this generation and condemn them. Wow. wow. Those are ouchy words. words. I mean, can I mean, you can picture you the crowd thickening, thickening, the crowd thickening, 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 and Jesus says, this is an evil generation. generation. Well, that's well, a that's good a one good to get one their get attention. attention. You got me you got tuned, me tuned in, in now, now that you that insulted, insulted me and told me I, this is an evil generation. generation. Well, Jesus says, I'm going to tell you that the queen of the south will rise up in judgment and condemn this generation, you people. Because you rejected the knowledge that was given to you. She searched and sought out. You have it right in your face and you reject it. Which tells us there is a judgment coming. Look at verse 32. And as far as this matter is a greater than Solomon is here, we'll hold that for a second. Look at verse 32. The men of Nineveh will rise up in what? Judgment with this generation and do what with it? Condemn it. Why? Because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. Though Jonah was reluctant, he still preached. Repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Judgment, judgment is coming. coming. You better turn. You, better turn. you see, this, you these, see this, this is pretty, pretty sobering, sobering statements, statements that Jesus, that Jesus is making to this, this group of people, this hardened, hardened heart-rejecting, heart unfaithful, unbelieving, unbelieving people. people. A wicked, a wicked pagan, pagan nation, nation repents, repents at the preaching of just, just this little this Jonah, Jonah prophet guy. guy. Here, here is the ultimate sign of heaven. heaven. Here, here is, is, here is, here is the, king the king of the kingdom, kingdom preaching to you, and you're, and you're rejecting, rejecting it. it. And that's what he that's says when he says, 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 and indeed a greater than Jonah is here, a greater than Solomon is here, a wiser, a greater. Here is the kingdom of God before you in the flesh. And you reject, you reject it. it. You, reject you reject it. And you may be thinking, well, what am I to be doing with all this? What have you what done, have with, you done Jesus? with Jesus? Neutral, Neutral you cannot, cannot be. be. Where are you at? Where are you at? Well, let's well, move let's on. Move on. Because, because this, this really, really is a is continuation. A this seems a little... A little like, like, in fact, in fact my Bible, Bible has a bold, bold number, number 33, 33 as if it's changing thoughts and it's not, not changing, changing thoughts. thoughts. 
If we can have the next slide. Thank you. So he just gets done saying that they repented at the preaching of Jonah and indeed a greater than Jonah is here. And so here is God's light standing before him. Let's look at these two verses. No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lamp stand, that those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. I guess that's the verse we're on. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body also is full of light. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed that the light which is within in, in you is not darkness. So it's very similar to say, blessed are those uh, are, are better. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and does it. And then he reminds them of all that they've been subject to, all the signs, the wonders, the preaching, the teaching that they have been subject to. They have been given much illumination. Jesus has been revealed to them. The kingdom of God has been revealed to them. And Jesus reminds them, look, when, you, when someone has a little lamp, they don't hide it. God didn't hide me from you. God revealed me to you. I put it right out there on Front Street for you. And what have you done with it? And then he says, and this is just, again, a word picture, an illustration, metaphor for us to understand the spiritual, spiritual implication that is here. The lamp of the body is the eye. Just think about this. When's the last time you thanked God for your five senses? Have I even thought about that before? The fact that I can see, the fact that I can hear, sometimes you don't want to hear. That I can feel, that I can smell, that I can taste. But to be open to that spiritual sense of understanding. We take in information all the time. And so, and so Jesus is using the, 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 the fact, fact that, that we physically, physically see. And, and, and so when, so when we, we see, we, our, our body has light. Our whole body is affected by what we see, by the light that we come in or that comes through our eyes. But spiritually speaking, without Christ, we're in the dark. And you're either, and you're either in the, in light, the light of Christ, Christ or you're, you're in total, total darkness. darkness. He, he, he uses something, something physical. physical. He uses, he uses our, our natural, natural eyesight, eyesight to help us to understand, to understand where we're at where spiritually. We're at spiritually. And, and I think and of I think the, illumination, the illumination, if you will, will, will that, that people, people are walking walk around, around with. with. And as I told you last week, the false security in that. Some are just relying on their intelligence. Some are relying on their philosophy. Some have all this different, if you will, artificial illumination that they're holding on to. And they think very much, I'm in the light, I'm in the light. That's why Jesus says, take heed. You better make sure that what you say is light is truly light. I mean, understand. Do you realize how many people go out of eternity or go out into eternity lost because they think they have the light? Like last week, if you would dig in their bag or dig in their box, they would say, yeah, I've got a light here somewhere. My intelligence, my degrees, my status. My hodgepodge, my hodgepodge philosophy that I've put together through the years. Yeah, I have light. But is it the light of life? Is it the true light? The one who gives true revelation. Is that your light? Well. Jesus says you're, you're blind. You're in darkness. 
you think your righteousness, your self-righteousness will cut it, it won't cut it. You, you, you think you have the light that you need for your body to be well informed and to be right with God and yet if you have not the light of life you're in darkness. And so let me close with this verse and I would like to spend more time but I think the point is made. The last I am statement I'll share with you today is this. When Jesus says, I, Jesus spoke to them and saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall, walk, shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. So here are these Jews, both the scribes, the, or the, scribes, the Pharisees, the spiritual leadership, and the nation of Israel for the most part. Jesus crying out to them, take heed how you hear. Jesus telling them, be careful of what light you have in you. Why is he saying that? Because they keep rejecting the light. You're saying you're good to go. You're saying you have light for life. You're rejecting me. You can't have the light for life. The light, the light of light, life. Light. How many How see, see this? this? Be, careful. Be careful. Take, Take heed. heed. Watch, Watch out, out that this light, light you say you have you for have life. life. Be, Be careful. careful. Is it the Is right, it the right, right light? light? You, you, what would it what be would to be get to the end of life and find out you've gone through life with this artificial illumination. You thought everything was right and it's wrong. And Jesus, Jesus says, says, he who he follows me shall me not walk in darkness, darkness, but have but the light of, light of life. So according, so according to Jesus' according to Jesus's statement, statement here, here are you walking in the light, or are you walking in darkness? Remember, hearing about it isn't enough. Effectual hearing moves us to faith. From rejecting, from rejecting to repenting. To repenting. True, faith True faith moves, moves us from 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 the from trusting and holding, and holding on, on to what, what we think, think is right, right, right and letting, letting go, go and, coming and coming to the true light. light. This, tells this tells the story. The story. If you're not if you're following, following Jesus, Jesus, I don't care well, how refined, sophisticated, sophisticated, important you important may think you, think you are, are, you're in you're darkness. In darkness. Doesn't matter how much how money you money have in your retirement, retirement fund. fund, doesn't matter what's all in your portfolio, portfolio. doesn't matter what doesn't you, what you own, own or have, have in this in world. world. If you don't have Christ, you're walking in darkness. And Nineveh, and, Nineveh, and people who and you who considered, considered were low lives, lives will in the day of, the day of judgment, judgment rise up, rise up to, witness to witness the condemnation, the condemnation of all those who rejected Christ. Christ. Let, us Let us pray. Father, we thank, we thank you that you Jesus, Jesus is the light, the light of the world, and he who follows him shall not walk in darkness, darkness, but shall have the light of life. Help us, help us to see that Jesus, Jesus is your ultimate sign. He is your revelation. In days past, you talked in various ways to the people through the prophets, but in these last days, you have talked, you have spoken, you have revealed yourself through Jesus, in whom you made the world. Father, continue to call and draw people to Christ. Help them to forsake Every other, Every other, all other all things, things, the securities of the things of this world, help them to forsake and to fully trust in Jesus. In his name I pray, amen.
today, that they will understand that every time they hear the gospel, every time they hear Jesus' words, that it does bring them to a place of decision, whether they're going to hold on to their own thoughts, their own beliefs, or whether they're going to turn. Turn by Turn faith, by faith to, him. to Him. But this is a calling. This is a calling to come. And to not to come is to reject. For those who know Christ as Lord and Savior, those who are walking in the light as He is in the light, those of us who have the light of life, help us to follow all the more to abide and remain to give everything over to you and trust give us faith to believe it give us strength to follow and for those who who are not who remain in darkness, darkness, who remain remain in skepticism. skepticism. Oh God, God, have mercy mercy on them. them. Bring light. light. Let them hear your call. call. Let them stop Stop rejecting, rejecting, stop stop running, running. and come to Jesus. In his name I pray. Amen.